Creative financing in real estate from an investor's perspective. Hey guys, there's more than one way to secure financing for your next property venture. As somebody who's been doing creative real estate investing for over 20 years, I've learned a thing or two about creative financing. Creative financing is a strategy that can make all of the difference in achieving your investment goals without breaking the bank. So what exactly is creative financing, you might ask? Simply put, it's thinking outside of the box when it comes to funding your real estate deals and making offers to motivated sellers. Instead of relying solely on traditional bank loans, creative financing opens up a world of alternatives and options that can be tailored to fit your unique situation. You see, when I first got started in real estate, I was buying houses with hard money lenders. And then what I would do is I would refinance those houses after we renovated them with traditional financing bank loans. But then in 2008, that market disappeared because I was doing what's called stated income loans. And stated income loans was basically for self-employed people who didn't have a W-2 income. Now, even if you have a W-2 income and you buy houses with your W-2 income, eventually what's going to happen if you continue buying rental properties is that the banks are going to cut you off at some point. Rather, that's five houses on the books or 10 houses on the books. Even if you have equity positions in those properties and you've made those payments on time and you've got perfect credit eventually they're going to tap you out and you're going to have to search for other creative ways of doing that. And so that's what happened to me when the 2008 market crashed. And then they took away all of those uh, stated income loans and things that I was using back in the day. Okay. So one popular method for creating financing is what we call seller financing. The arrangement involves the property seller basically acting as the bank. The seller becomes the lender, allowing you to make payments to the seller on a monthly basis. And this creative strategy can create a win-win situation for both us as the buyer as well as the seller because it often gives us flexible terms that we dictate that we pre present as an offer and then also it gives the seller a steady stream of income while the buyer us avoids the strict requirements of bank loans and all of the delays that it might take to go through the traditional route of doing a deal through a bank loan again my favorite the most beneficial way, in my opinion, and my favorite strategy for buying houses, creative financing, is actually buying houses subject to the existing mortgage. So what is subject to the existing mortgage, you might ask? Well, that's basically when we're buying a property subject to the existing mortgage, it simply means that we're buying a property from a motivated seller. Oftentimes, these sellers are behind on payments. They're in a pre-foreclosure situation, or they've gotten a divorce, or they've got two house payments because they've already moved and they uh, bought a new property and this one hasn't sold yet. So oftentimes these motivated sellers are in a situation where they need to sell desperately right away. And the solution that we found that works great for them and for us is by purchasing that property subject to the existing loan, which simply means instead of buying the house all cash with a conventional loan and paying off their mortgage, we actually purchase that property by taking over the payments on the existing debt that's in place. That's what subject to is in a nutshell. Like I said, a lot of times they're behind on payments. So the benefit to them is that we're going to bring that loan current and make payments on time from now into the future. As long as we control and own that property, the mortgage will be being paid. And that essentially will help kind of reestablish and rebuild their credit. So it's good for them because now it's rebuilding their credit. So that way, when the situation that caused them to get behind is past them and they're back on their feet a year or two years or three years down the road, their credit from this mortgage will be helping improve, okay? And so that's one of my favorite strategies is buying houses subject to, it's a legitimate strategy that's legal. It's not conventional, but it is legal. We still close everything with a real estate attorney or a title company to make sure that everything is handled and everything is done above board, okay? So that's the best, my favorite strategy. And one of the reasons is because we can do whatever we want with that property. We can fix it up and flip it and sell it. We can fix it up and hold it as a rental. We can fix it up and owner finance it to an owner occupant. We can fix it up, furnish it and put it on Airbnb. Every exit strategy that you can think of is available to us when we purchase the property subject to. Another creative financing strategy is lease options. So with a lease option, you're essentially purchasing the property on a lease with the option to buy it. You're getting an option to purchase that property as one contract, and then you're also getting a lease agreement to be able to rent it. So a lot of times this strategy is done when there might not be a lot of equity in the deal, right? Or the seller is a little bit reluctant to letting you take over the payments or giving you seller financing. With a lease option, you can secure the purchase price of the property now 
lease it. A lot of times you can get them to credit some of those lease payments towards the purchase price. And then once there's enough equity built up, then you can purchase it at a later date. This gives you the exclusive right, the option to buy it where the seller can't sell it to anybody else. As long as you're current on your agreement, current on your payments and handling that and making sure that he can't sell it to somebody else. Most of the time, I'll be honest, I use lease options to sell properties. I don't really typically buy properties on lease options, but sometimes I do if I'm doing some sort of rental arbitrage and putting it on Airbnb and I want the option to purchase it at a later date. So again, lease options are a great strategy and you can use them when you're exiting a property, when you offer that to an owner occupant that might not have the best credit now, but if you work with them over the course of a year or two, then they can purchase a property once you help them get their credit fixed and get them qualified for a bank loan. So creative financing can also involve tapping into other sources of funding, right? And this is another source that I want to talk to you about right now. And that's hard money lenders and or private money partners. Okay. A hard money lender is just that. It's essentially a lender that is versed in real estate investing. And they're essentially loaning you enough money to purchase the property, renovate the property, and then sell the property. It's typically a six month term, right? So you have six months to purchase it, renovate it, and then flip it. Your only exit strategy is going to be to sell that property or refinance it if you're going to plan on keeping it, right? So very limited to what you can do on the exit when you work with hard money lenders, because it's essentially just a six month construction loan. Private money partners, on the other hand, you have a little bit more control. This is essentially friends, family, business associates, people that you've done business with in the past, people who already know you, like you, and trust you, and know that you're investing in real estate. And maybe they have some investment capital sitting on the sidelines or in their retirement account or in bank CDs or in the stock market that they want to diversify. And they would like to partner with you to put that money to work in real estate. And so what we can do is we can partner with private money lenders and make them a partner in the deal. This allows us to buy, fix, and flip, to buy and hold, to work out an agreement with the, with the private money partner that fits their needs, and to be able to actually buy the house, renovate it, and sell it, make a profit, sharing those profits with that private money partner, and giving you both a win-win scenario where they get a better return, secured, safely invested against real estate, while diversifying their portfolio, moving some of their investment capital out of the stock market. One of the key advantages of using creative financing is the flexibility that we have, right? Because what is the best thing that we can do when we're buying from a motivated seller is to tell them that we've got the funds available. We don't have to wait for a bank to approve us. We don't have to go through the conventional financing methods and all of the red tape that goes with that. We can close in as little as seven days with cash or creative financing. So rather you're dealing with a property in need of repairs, facing tight lending requirements or a lending market, or simply looking to maximize your returns, creative financing offers you the solutions that traditional loans may not. Of course, like any investment, creative financing comes with its own risks. It's important to thoroughly research and understand the terms of any financing arrangement before moving forward. Working with experienced professionals, such as an experienced real estate investor or financial advisors, can help mitigate these risks and ensure a successful outcome for all parties involved. In years, in my years of experience, I found that creative financing can be a powerful tool for achieving your real estate investment goals by thinking creatively, exploring alternative financing options that you can unlock opportunities that may otherwise be out of reach. So when you're dealing with motivated sellers, it's good strategy to make them multiple offers. One might be all cash. Another one might be part creative, part cash. Another one might be all creative, right? So when you make these multiple choice offers to a seller, oftentimes you'll be able to help them choose one of the offers that you present to them instead of them taking and going out and shopping for other investors to purchase that property. This leaves you in control and it gives you a better chance of getting the deal done. So whether you're a seasoned investor or you're just starting out, don't be afraid to think outside of the box when it comes to financing your next real estate investment. With the right strategy and a little creativity, and a little bit of guidance, the possibilities are endless. I'm Philip Ward. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the flip side.